Do you want more great content from me? Check out the description box down below. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So as you can see today, I've got the lovely Celtic traders with me and I'm going to be asking them some interview questions. So, without further ado, we shall get on with the interview. Um, the first question is quite a, a common question, a lot of people get asked it, and that is, what was the first item you ever sold? Do you actually remember that? I'm sure it was a while Ooh. ago. I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, I, really no can't idea. I, I can't remember mine. No. So. I, I do remember a very early experience when we were selling, and that was we, we were actually we started selling by selling our old stuff around the house. We were yeah. just getting rid of things, weren't we? It was on just a private account. We weren't we never even thought of an eBay business at that time. And a lot of the stuff we were selling was just not to put in storage because we went over to the continent for six months. So yeah. we thought, right, we'll have a clear out. And I had some mugs. Um, sort of uh, spit and image uh, mugs, political mugs, oh, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And they sold quite well. Mm -hmm. And I wrapped them up in bubble wrap and I put them in a bubble envelope and I stuck the, date on, the address on them and yeah. I sent them through the post. Everyone broke. <laughs> <laughs> so you could, it wasn't the very first item, but it was one of the first items and it does show you learn by experience. Yeah, yes, definitely. <laughs> because that was not funny, was mm -hmm. it? No, it was just refund, refund, <laughs> refund. Yeah. So I also learned how to do refunds very early in my yeah. sales career as well. And also how to then pack further on as well. Yes, that's yeah. that's why Caroline learned to do the FOMO packing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm right. more the packing. So, uh, you know, I can, now the and yeah. as tables. you've seen in the video, I've now thrown cups off the tops of cliffs yeah. and they survived I, I love, the journey. I love that video. It's one of your most popular videos as well, isn't it? Yeah, and I think it is. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think it is. Uh, hopefully the mighty mug will catch up with it because yeah. after bouncing on trampolines, running across mountains and sliding down slides, I think I deserve <laughs> to get a few fun. likes and credits <laughs> on that. So, uh, next question is how did you actually stumble across reselling? I'll leave that to you. Well, I suppose, I suppose a bit it, of it was does, in there. Yeah, a bit uh, of it. Want to build on it? Well, as Phil said, we had been selling our own things on eBay and then somebody gave me a loom. Now, I, I'm into craft, knitting, crochet, and somebody gave me a weaving loom and I wanted to make tea towels. So okay. I needed cotton yarn, which is notoriously expensive, well, it was then. So we were broke. I thought, how on earth can I justify spending money on cotton yarn to make some tea towels? So I was looking on eBay and I found job lots. So I thought, if I buy a job lot of cotton yarn, yeah. take up what I want and then sell the rest, then perhaps I can make most of the money back on it so it won't cost too much. Yeah. So I took up what I wanted, which turned out to be over half. I then sold each cone individually and I made back a lot more than I paid for, for the original yeah. lot of yarn. And from mm. then on, I was hooked. Uh, yeah, that was the uh, Eureka moment when I first yes. suddenly thought, Whoa, you can buy things from people and they're very happy with what you gave them and then resell them by, as Caroline said, breaking them down, doing yeah. the research. And we probably were doing ninety percent yarn then for a year or two, weren't we? At least ninety percent. At least you know, with the yarn. odd we'd see the odd thing, you know, now and then. And really it was the yarn world starting to crash. Yeah. And we were seeing things we were selling for forty odd pounds. We could put up um, Caroline could take all loose ends of yarn, make up the cakes, wanna put them in a bundle, put them up on a nine ninety auction and they'd bid up forty, fifty pounds. Yeah. And then suddenly they were going twenty pounds. And then you were lucky to get nine pounds. So we thought the hours of work are just not worth yeah. it. We've got to do something different. But within that time, we'd been seeing what others were doing. We'd been going around, and but uh, so we realised the buy and sell thing was works with option, anything yeah. that's in fashion at the time. Yeah. So that's why we switched then and started yeah. what I now call Caroline's eclectic mix. <laughs> so the next question is: What is your favourite place to source stock? Oh, that's changed over the time, haven't it, really? It? And yeah. it changes every few months because the charity shops change their method of working. Sometimes they start to creep the prices up and up and up and up, and you know it's only going to be a couple of months yeah. and they're going to realise nobody's buying anymore and they come straight back down to being like a pound shop. So where's our favourite at the moment? It used well, to be Bridge End, I think. As, as, far, as far as sort of sourcing is concerned, uh, the most enjoyable experience... Is still charity shops. Yeah. You know, we're on a two-day break now, and yeah. we've spent it in charity yes. shops. 
Caroline's birthday, we spent, we went to the South Coast and spent it not on the beach, but in charity shops. Yeah. So we love the old search and find and just wonder if we'll get anything here and just being together and going around. But I think as far as um, getting the best buys for sale, it's probably now auction, going mm -hmm. to auction. The, yeah. the boxes, because there you get, it's not the same as wandering from shop to shop, but you do have these boxes and you rummage yeah. to the bottom when you get home and you always find something, something. tucked in the bottom of the box which, no idea, yeah. it? which you it's think is lucrative. worthless and then you look yeah. it up and find it's worth 30 quid and suddenly you're sort of it's that it's, it's a thrill of the chase yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think every reseller probably who sticks at it gets that yeah definitely and that's what gets you through so i'd say auctions these days mm. You know, if you can get a good auction and yeah. they've got the house clearance boxes, that's so favourite place. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. for me as well. Um, so, how do you cope with slow sales? <laughs> um, uh, that's a very um, current question because is, they, yes. they have slowed on occasions. We had our first uh, 24 hours in a while with mm. absolutely no sales uh, just this week on. And we, we went 24 hours with no ka at all, mm. which um, was... It, it, I think it's something I keep saying on the channel is don't ever get too much into the micro. Yeah. Always f pull back and look at the macro. Yeah. So judge yourself over the last three months, judge yourself over the last month, look at your year's sales. Are you d look at, and of course eBay fair play to them for all that we have a moan when things are not as we want. They have got a lot of stuff out there, stats and stuff. Yeah. So you can do your comparisons, you can see how you're doing this month to last month, etc. So it's it's keeping looking at the big picture. And I said something possibly on Monday, I think, on the video. If even if you're having a day with no sales, the only reason you describe that as a day with no sales is because you're a reseller. Yeah. 99.99% recurring of the people out there never have a sale with no days because mm. they never make a sale. Yeah. So we're making money. So the bad days are par for the course because the good days come. Yeah. And Q, Q1's never going to be like Q4. But at the same time, at all points, you can make something. Definitely, you know, and that's what we. That's so. And I tend I to be the philosopher in the family, maybe. You do. Was I, I tend do. to be more practical, and I think, well, if we've made no sales today, I've got no parking today. Yeah, that's so definitely I what can I get think. more listing done today. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's just a matter of seeing the positives where it you does, can. I mean, it frees you up, doesn't it, for, to do other things when yeah. you're not got when you're not having as many sales. So. Mm. And Carly's very proactive as well because we are totally different, and we're probably not the people everyone thinks we are. From YouTube, mm. that that's the mystery, you know. Yeah. We we we've got very diverse characters, and whereas I'll just chill, switch off, and think, okay, we're going to sales, that's fine. Caroline will think, what can I do? Yeah. And Caroline will turn around and just start going through and doing. Um, right, I'll change the pricing on some of these. I'm going to take that down by two pound and put two ninety nine postage. I'm going to run a twenty five percent sale. I'm going to open stuff up to offers, and like we just got an offer through now. Caroline had something up for twenty nine ninety nine that literally cost us next to nothing in a box. Somebody offered us 18 pound, there was 2.99, 4, 4 99 4 posted. Yeah. So Caroline thought about it for about half a second and accepted the offer. Yeah. Because, so the offers, all right, that's, people say you're losing 11 pound. No, yeah. no, no, yeah. we actually just made yeah. 18 pound 99. Yeah. And I got the price from inyourdreams.com because yeah. I that's... had no idea what this item was worth. Yeah. I've never seen one like it, so. And it's it very important to remember work. that if you if if you're in the game of aiming high and making up prices, when somebody makes you an offer, don't look at the offer compared to what you're asking. Look at the offer compared to what you paid. Yeah. yeah. So we are, that sign knows us about fifty p, and we've just got eighteen ninety nine. Yeah. That that's that's good. Yeah. If you that's say a good mind. that's eleven pound less than we're asking, that's because Caroline is a dreamer. Yeah. And somebody may have paid it, and it wasn't yeah. ridiculous, and it drew in the buyer. Yeah. But then to go back and say, well, would you give me £22? Well, for £4, you could lose the sale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if it's something we really believe in, and we've done this with some items, yeah, we've yeah. refused two or three offers and then yeah. got much nearer the price. But um, yeah, if there's no sales, do what you can. Yeah. But don't panic. Don't panic. So the next one is, which one's this one? Uh, what inspired you to sell vintage items opposed to maybe more general items? Well, it started off not vintage, but antique. We would go uh, to a charity shop and we would think, well, I'd look at it, ooh, this 
Jackie's old. I'm going yeah. to buy this and make a fortune on it. And we didn't. very quickly realised that <laughs> things that were antique no. that we were thought would make a lot of money didn't make any money. Yeah. But things that we thought were vin- were antique but were only vintage were starting to make good money. Yeah. So I started looking more into the vintage market, the mid-century modern market, and realised that that's where the money was. Yeah. So though I tend to very rarely would I pick up anything antique it's got to be something yeah. really special or I find it in an auction box but it's usually vintage I look for yeah and there is a good selection of vintage out there if definitely you look. yeah it's there's the market. loads of auctions that have so many vintage mm. items in antique items as well so. it's because it's house clearance and yeah the, and the, the you know the houses that are being cleared for people that perhaps now are, are aged and moving into smaller accommodation going into yeah. homes such as uh, like they're people who were buying through the 60s and yeah. 70s. Yeah. And the young people today are buying their yeah. memories from childhood, yeah. from the 60s and 70s. Yeah. So it's, it's there in abundance. But as Caroline says, price drives what we sell, really, to a large degree. We, so we would not, we sell a little bit of yarn now because if Caroline spots it and she knows there's something a, there's special, a, like Moe David, yeah. I wouldn't pick up but, a standard yarn. But at the time, it was the thing to do, mm-hmm. wasn't it? So Very you good. move it, what's it? And I would say vintage modern is probably where it's at. at the minute. I think it's starting to move though now. I think people are becoming more not mid century modern. They start to go for 80s, 90s. Yeah. Maybe not in furniture because the eighties and nineties furniture generally was very poor condition. Yeah. But you know, the plastic runners and things, so most of it's damaged yeah. and broken anyway. But when it comes to fashion and jewelry and thing and toys, it's amazing how many eighties and nineties toys are getting very popular. Yeah, definitely. I mean, loads of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yes. Ghostbusters, yeah. loads and loads. All the things I threw away because my children didn't play with them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> pounds and pounds worth. So we'll move on to your YouTube channel now. So why was it you decided to set up a YouTube channel? Right, well, this is going to be me again, isn't it? It is. You, I, I had nothing to do with YouTube. <laughs> but I was brought in later. I, I was the afterthought. Well, well, you weren't an afterthought because no. that's why we called us the Celtic Traders. That's right. It's just well, I you still did the thumbnails for Phil as well, didn't you? Yes. So we were both going to be in. I was I, I'd always shy. had a dream of starting a business and being so successful I could employ other people because yeah. there's so little employment in our area. It's something I just really wanted to do. And because of life, that just never happened. And when I was doing eBay, I realised just how easy it is if somebody, if you look at it in a very practical and methodical way to make money. Yeah. So I thought, well, I may not be able to employ people, but I can show people how to employ themselves, yeah. how to become self-employed, change their lives, and start taking the children on holidays, perhaps buy a house or whatever, all through doing something like eBay. Yeah. So as I was learning, I decided I'd just teach other people that. So that's how the eBay channel started. And we were planning on bringing Phil in, but then Phil's business took off, so yeah. he moved out, and that's why a lot of our banners and things have all just got me on, which I look very yeah. conceited and big-headed, <laughs> but it's because I did it all thinking Phil was robbing out. Yeah. But no. now he's made the effort to give me the time that yeah. he will come in yeah. and do some videos, so I really have to change all those yeah. headers and things. <laughs> yeah. Put him back in again. And I didn't... I, I, I was... The strange thing is, when it comes to public speaking, I do it all the time. Yeah. When it comes to sitting in front of a camera, I just don't get it. Yeah. Caroline performs brilliantly in front of a camera. You're also mm. very good at public speaking and always beat me in competition. But Cam- Caroline would rather be behind a camera mm. than stood in front of a crowd of people. Yeah. I, f- I find it the people being there helps me to engage. Yeah, it motivates you. Yeah. And I don't have the capacity to imagine. So Caroline sees you all. Yeah. When Caroline's there, you're all there. Mm. Yeah. In her mind, Caroline sees you all, she yeah. knows you're out there. And when somebody responds in the chat, she visualises who you are. Yeah. I don't have that sort of brain. I cannot visualise. Yeah. I've got a measure of dyslexia. So I don't see anything. All I see is this black thing in front the of camera. me. Yeah. And I, I, for a long time, I was responding simply to that. As I've got more at ease and more used to performing in front of the camera that's why now i do the motivational mondays which yeah. i introduced so i've started developing things myself as well because i do think it's a wonderful tool and and, and we and when we were with uh, tom yesterday he said something he said when you help others it can be seen as a totally selfish thing because of yeah. the amount of good feeling you get from doing yeah. something like that and he's right 
So we do get a buzz mm -hmm. from doing and getting the messages from people who are saying, I never would have started reselling if I hadn't been watching your videos. I, I was, you know, I, I waited so long and I was thinking I couldn't do it. But from what you've said, I decided to have a go and I'm so glad I did. And uh, as I say, even with Tom, when he was making his leap, um, we, we were able to write back and forward, just encourage yeah. him, you know, to, to do the maths and go for it. You know, you've got to live your dream. So all these things are exactly what Caroline said. It opens up the world to us to just... Yeah. Well, I think we're turning into mum and dad of the YouTube because uh, we're certainly older than everybody else yes. on there just about. Of course, we've got lots of folks out there. We've got some brilliant people on the yeah. Facebook page and uh, uh, in the chat to uh, our age uh, and above. Because uh, yeah. that's the great thing with eBay. It makes money. Yeah. Pensioners need money. Single, it's young mums everyone, need yeah, money. It's good for everyone. You know, middle-aged folks with teenagers need money. Everybody yeah. needs money. So yeah. eBay works. And that's yeah. the beauty of it. At this moment in time, it is the the way to to make money yeah and do yeah. it from from within your own time scale and at your own pace it's, it's absolutely great when uh, and it's the reason i continue with youtube to actually help people and when you receive those comments in from people who are actually genuinely touched that you've given the time and given your energy yeah. to help them it, it that's what you do it for you know yeah. um so finally i wanted to end on how would you describe your youtube channel in just one word Oh, now that's really difficult. You should have given us warning for that. Eclectic. Uh, I suppose, yes. <laughs> that's my only word. word. My because one word. <laughs> not only do we sell an eclectic bunch of things, but we also got motivation. We got the live chat. Yeah. We got the sales videos. We have now some interview videos, some how-to videos. Yeah. So I suppose we're not... It's eclectic. Yeah, eclectic, eclectic yes. yeah. Yep. Sums it up, yeah. Yep. Right then, that's it. So uh, thank you for both joining me. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. you for you guys for tuning in and I will see you in another video so see you very soon. Bye! Bye!